welcome to Onslow County today and I have to say we are in one of my favorite places here in Onslow County. This is the beautiful Stump Sound and we are out here exploring our Onslow County just like we always want you to. We have some wonderful guests today. We're going to be talking with Captain Bruce Dixon with the Onslow County Sheriff's Office about their junior Citizens Academy. We'll also visit with Mary Downing from the Onslow County Museum, going to explore Mesoamerica this summer at the museum. We'll also chat with Jeremy Butler about vector control and what we need to all do to control mosquito populations in Onslow County. These are not guests we want at our picnics this summer. And then we'll talk with Jennifer Randall and Tori Parks from the Onslow County Public Library System about finding adventure that starts at our Onslow County Public Libraries. And finally, we'll talk with Norman Bryson from Onslow County Emergency Services about planning for inclement weather this summer. As always, we're so glad you're here for Onslow County today. It's a pretty good day at the Onslow. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us now is Captain Bruce Dixon. Captain Dixon, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a beautiful day to be here. Um, we want to talk about a very special program that you all have at the Onslow County Sheriff's Office for young people. Tell us about your Junior Citizens Academy at the Onslow County Sheriff's Office um, and what it is. So first things first, what is this program and how long have you been running it? Yes, ma'am. Our Junior Citizens Academy uh, came out of the result of our Adult Citizens Academy. Uh, we saw that there was a need for, for our youth to also see their sheriff's office, see how the, uh, the employees work there and how the deputies perform their duties. Uh, so we decided to run a Junior Academy. And they go through basically the same thing the adults go through the mm -hmm. Academy. They will get introduced to the, uh, to the jail and how the detention officers perform their duties. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll get introduced to patrol and how the patrol officers work. They've met their SROs, they understand their SROs, but right. they get a little one-on-one -on -one with an SRO okay. as well. Uh, and talk to our narcotics division, our SWAT, our boat wow. and rescue teams, uh, and quite, quite a bit more. And uh, their final uh, night with us, they will perform duties as a patrolman in scenarios right. that uh, that are normal response that our, our deputies normally respond to. What an incredible experience. Now, how old are the students who are eligible to participate? Yes, ma'am. We're looking for students between the ages of 14 and 17. Okay. So middle school, eighth grade uh, to high school. Okay. And again, we would like these uh, students to be interested in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. What a great way to learn about it. Yes, ma'am. And we offer a law enforcement explorer's post as well, okay. which is an ongoing for, for, okay. uh, for juveniles, for uh, youth, uh, all the way up to the age of 21. Oh, what a terrific way, again, to it's be introduced a, to what you all do. It's a wonderful bridge or transition if they are looking for a career in law enforcement. But if they're just looking for a good time, Tuesday nights, starting June 18th, okay. graduating July 23rd, All right. from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. every right. Tuesday night. Uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to, to learn about your community. It's a wonderful opportunity to, to meet and hang out with law enforcement officers. And, and just understand how it all works. Well, and, and there are so many pieces of your office there at the sheriff's office. I mean, you know, we traditionally think of the deputies who are out on the, out on the road and keeping us safe, but you all keep us safe from every corner of that building. I mean, as you say, from learning about the jail to the processing of information. I mean, you all, it's, it's just such a complex structure and you introduced them to this in, in small bits as you go. Yes, ma'am. And many of our interested students are, are looking at the 
crime scene investigation mm -hmm. side, the forensic side. And in this academy, we get, we get deep into that as well. So, so everything is covered in all aspects of law enforcement and our sheriff's office. And we're proud to present it and we're really eager to, to meet the kids. Now, if a student, if a family is interested in registering their students in the program, how do they do that? Yes, ma'am. They can simply go on to the Onslow County Sheriff's Office Facebook page mm -hmm. or just contact me through email, uh, Bruce underscore Dixon at OnslowCountyNC.gov. Yes, sir. Um, or just call the Sheriff's Office. All right. And they can register. Do you limit the number of students that can participate? So we want to register early and get in there? Yes, ma'am. We try to hold our, our classes to about 24 students. Okay. I've currently got eight registered, so okay. there's some available seats still left. All right. Now, I'd love to always know, you've done this a few years now, what students say when they complete the program? What's been their experience? I would, I would venture to say the final night when they are the responding deputy oh, to, yeah. to a normal call for service that the normal deputies handle, I would say that they're actually surprised on on how much uh, involvement it takes, how much uh, uh, work it takes to, to resolve some of these conflicts that the deputies do run into. You know, um, as you said, this is a great introduction and you all also do this for adults. Understanding the, the challenges that you all face, but also the rewards. How, how have you all shared that individually with these students? Because they get to meet everyone. Um, how, what's the interaction like between Sheriff's Office staff and the students? Well, this is our future. The, these, these children, these youth are our future. So we're extremely vested into the future of Onslow County and the, and the future uh, on a whole, the United States. So any one-on-one -on -one we can get with these folks to, uh, to put them on a positive path, to keep yeah. them on a positive path is, is, is our goal. And, uh, and we just love sharing. That is fantastic. Again, they can go to your Facebook site, which is very active. You all are terrific on social media. Call the office or email you directly. Um, got a few seats left. Remind me one more time, age of the students that are eligible. Yes, ma'am. We're looking for students between the age of 14 and 17. And the one question you might get is, is there a cost associated with this? No, ma'am. There is no cost associated with it, Sheriff's Office, uh, and with donations from a few private entities. Uh, puts on the course for free. Fantastic. Well, we are so excited to see what happens at the end of the summer. Maybe we can get a chance to visit. And um, I know that you all are going to post pictures and take lots of images. So be on the lookout. Learn more about the Onslow County Sheriff's Office Junior Citizens Academy. Captain Dixon, thank you as always for being here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us now is Mary Downing with the Onslow County Museum. Mary, thanks for coming out and helping me enjoy this beautiful view. This is awesome. Thanks for having me. Well, it is the kickoff for summer. Yeah. And at the Onslow County Museum, you've been working on summer since Christmas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you have planned this year for the annual summer art program. Well, our summer art program will have the theme of Mesoamerica. We're going to be talking about the Maya, the Inca, the Aztec, and we have two week-long camps this year. One is June 24th to June 28th. That's for ages 8 to 11. And then the other one is July 8th through the 12th for ages 11 to 14. So you've got them divided up, the younger students in the first session, older students in the second session. Tell us about summer art, what it is, and why kids would want to participate. Summer Art is a fun program where we talk about all things, we will be talking about all things Mesoamerica, but also doing crafts to incorporate what we're talking about. And then we get to go on a field trip. This year we're going to the North Carolina Museum of Art. Oh, fantastic. And the kids get to partake in a skit at the end of the week, and it's a lot of fun. Now, for families who want to register, what's the first thing they need to do? They can check online on the Onslow County Museum website. They can check our social media, or they can come to the museum and fill out a registration form there. Now, I, I want to know more because you have, as we, we said, you've been for the last five months completely devoted to Mesoamerica. Explain to us what that means and 
what the kids will be exploring. So it'll be talking about these ancient civilizations that were here thousands of years before us in Central Mexico and South America and all of their cultural traditions, their religious beliefs and things that go along with that. And then our families will be able to learn more as well because our children's summer exhibit will also be about exploring Mesoamerica. Fantastic. Now, when we think about those cultures of the Maya and the Inca and the Aztec, since you've been learning so much about it, what are some of the things that have surprised you or some of the cool things you've, you've found out? So, yes. Mary, yes. <laughs> since you've been so involved in the story of the Aztec and the Maya and the Inca, what are some of the cool things you've learned so far? Learned a lot about the cacao bean and how they use chocolate to make hot and cold drinks, but also the cacao bean would be used as a currency to trade at their markets. So, not everybody knows just how valuable chocolate is and was i mean i love it and i would use it for currency but really and truly this was a valuable commodity yes now as the kids kind of explore this you mentioned some arts and crafts activities they're going to do what are some things you've got in mind for them to build or to create well we are going to actually make our own hot cocoa okay. um, the old-fashioned way so it's a little really bit old -fashioned. really old-fashioned way <laughs> Um, and we will also be making adobe bricks and building out structures with those adobe bricks. And we'll get to create masks. Um, okay. For Because all Maya, Inca, and Aztec also all had different masks. Fantastic. Now, if a family wants to register their child, again, you mentioned social media website, come to the museum. What is the cost to participate? It is $75. Okay. And then there's... If you have, if I bring more than one kid, I get a discount? Yes, there's a $10 discount for siblings. Fantastic. So, summer art, two sessions, one for youngers, one for olders, um, field trip, um, anything else, because this is officially your third summer art. <laughs> yes. Um, in talking to kids who've participated, and kids come back year after year, mm -hmm. what do you think they love most about summer art? I think they love that they can create different things every day and then at the end they get to celebrate with their family and show off all the things that they made. Well, thank you for helping us learn more about Mesoamerica. I think, you know, when we think about ancient cultures, you know, people always, they love mummies, right? They mm -hmm. immediately go to Egypt or Greece or Rome. Um, but this is a great big world. That's right. And 5,000 years ago, some pretty cool things were happening mm -hmm. in South America and Central America. And you're going to bring it to life for these kids. Yes, ma'am. Well, Mary, thank you. Again, remind people the best telephone number to reach the museum um, or direct them to our social media. That's right. Our, muse our museum phone number is 910-324-5008. Or you can hit up the Onslow County Museum on Facebook. Fantastic. Mary Downing, Thank you Thank for you. bringing us to Mesoamerica. Anytime. Welcome back to Onslow County today. And joining us now is Jeremy Butler, director of Onslow County Vector Control. Jeremy, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You know, Jeremy, this is kind of the perfect environment habitat for your arch enemy, isn't it? It is, unfortunately. So here it is, it's summertime, it's warmed up, it's rained, we've got standing water. And Jeremy, we wanna really talk about what you all do at Vector Control to control mosquito populations, as well as what we can do. So the first thing first is explain to our viewers the role of vector control. The role of vector control is just to eliminate the process of any mosquitoes, born diseases that we have coming into the county. Uh, we do a lot of larva sighting, we do a lot of site visits, we do a lot of light trapping uh, for surveillance purposes, just to see what's coming in into the county. Now, we do that, we, you talked about mosquito-borne diseases. You know, we, we've heard, you know, I always refer to things historically, so I'm always gonna, oh, you know, think about 200 years ago, but contemporaneously, what are some things that you're concerned most about? Our, our main concern right now is Tripoli as well as West Nile. Okay, and so the first thing first is to really know 
the mosquitoes that are here and if they do carry any kind of diseases you mentioned monitoring what have you brought with you today because this is kind of a cool apparatus what we have here is a cdc light trap okay and what we do is we we have five permanent locations that we we set these traps out once a week to monitor our our mosquito numbers okay uh, we will actually send these off to the state um, they have contracts with local um, universities to where they, they will actually uh, test them for, uh. for mosquito-borne diseases. Okay. So that way we can help monitor, you know, what's in the county, if there are any diseases in here, if there's any places we need to focus on more. All right, so we're, we're trapping them, we're monitoring, we're making sure that nothing has made its way in um, to the county. Um, and you said especially you're concerned about things like um, Tripoli. Explain what that acronym is for everybody. Tripoli is Eastern Equine Encephalitis. Okay. It mainly affects horses. Okay. Uh, but it can uh, vector into a, a, a human being. All right. And then, of course, West Nile, which occasionally we hear about on the news at different um, different times of the year, yes. different locations. And that's really key is monitoring for those those kind of mosquito-borne diseases first. Yes. Before even doing anything to the environment to control the populations. Then you mention larvicides. So explain what that is. Larvicides, we have two different types of larvicides. We have a, a, a BTI, which is a Bacillus thuringiensis. Okay. It's a bacteria that we actually apply into the water that mosquitoes will ingest. And, and it erupts their insides. Okay, um, okay. Then we also have a, a methoprene, which is a, a growth regulator. All right. It just prevents uh, mosquito larvae from actually growing into a pupa stage as well as to an adult. All right, so we're stopping them before they even get big enough to do their damage. Absolutely. Now, um, the other thing is, as you all treat, you're very aware and very cognizant of the the um, environment around you and that's what this device is for because you work very closely with our beekeepers. Explain why this is important. We do. We Each truck is, is mounted with a, a data logger as if you're a beekeeper give us a call. Okay. We can actually throw this on our GIS and then transfer it to our handhelds and once we do that we'll put a 300 foot buffer around your your beehives and it'll monitor or let the, uh, the, the technician know to when he's in the area spraying that he needs to cut his machine off. Okay, so we're not going to impact the habitat of those uh, those beehives that those beekeepers have set up so diligently to create pollinator stations. Correct. Fantastic. And they sign up, they just contact you all and they can get registered. Yes, if they haven't contacted us in the past, please do so. Just okay. give us a call. Uh, if you want to, if you think you have, just call us. We can check real quick, and we will we will let you know. If not, we'll add you to the list. Very cool. Very all the technology that goes into this to keep us all safe. But there are simple things that I, as a homeowner, can do as well. So how do I help you do your job? How do I help control the mosquito population in my neighborhood? Ninety percent of our calls are homegrown calls, and what I mean by that is people raising their own mosquitoes. Oh. So you'll, you'll have buckets. Not the best pet, right? No, not the ones you want around. Okay. <laughs> but you have buckets, flower pots, uh, bird baths, wheelbarrows, things like that that hold water, but you don't think would actually raise mosquitoes. Okay. But when we go out there to, a, to a, do a visit, we, we find these locations. We, we do what we call tip and toss. All right. Tip the water over, and if you don't need it, toss it out. Tip and toss. And there are ways, so like if you have a rain barrel or you're collecting rainwater, there are ways to keep mosquitoes out, right? There are screens that they yes, use. Yes, you can purchase screens at your local lawn and garden. Just apply it to it if it doesn't have one on there. And if you have any questions, just give us a call. We go out there, we can, we can look at it for you and we, we can give you more advice. So you're gonna do your part. You're gonna trap and make sure, make, keep us as safe as we can be. And we need to do our, our part too and not, not be raising mosquitoes. There you go. Not raise mosquitoes. Jeremy, if folks do need to reach out to you, if they do have questions, what's the best way to reach you at Vector Control? Our uh, best way is to just call us. Okay. Which is 910-455-0181. Now, not only are you keeping us safe, but you're also making things more pleasant. We've got our kids out from school, they're outside playing, lots of family celebrations, weddings going on. Um, so the better we can do our job at home, and then you do your job, 
make the summer much more pleasant for everybody, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Well, Jeremy, thank you for keeping us safe um, and keeping us mindful of what we all need to do to keep mosquitoes out of Onslow County. I agree. Thank you thank so you. much. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us now is Jennifer Randall from the Onslow County Public Library. Jennifer, thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me as always. Uh, you, it. It's summertime. It is. And it's our favorite time of the year. It's our busiest time of the year too. Right? Sure. <laughs> we should be singing, you know, it's that most wonderful time. Of, you know. Yeah, that's what I always, that's what I always sing in our office actually when we talk about summertime. I said it's the most wonderful time of the year for us anyway. And, <laughs> It is time for summer reading. Yes. We want to know, for because we always have new folks who are moving to our community, new families. What is summer reading? What is this year's theme? And how can we be involved? So first things first, summer reading seems self-explanatory, but it's really not because it's very involved. It is very involved. So summer reading at the library um, is a way to really promote literacy throughout the summer, especially for our school age children that they think once school is over for the year they get the whole summer to you know just relax and but it's very important that they keep up with their literacy skills um, if they don't know how to read they don't won't be able to do a lot of things in life i mean you have to read doing math you have to read doing science you have to do all of that so you need to make sure that we're keeping the literacy skills up um, and it's also important for us as adults to be um, Mimic, for them to mimic us as adults. So if we're reading and we're getting excited about the challenges, uh, then we can really uh, have the children be excited too. So it's all encompassing um, with families. And that's the one thing that we try to really hone in on at the library is this is a whole family event. It's not just for children. It's also for adults and for families to come together and be able to participate. So, so really all ages, because we do, we want to start reading, I mean, you know, in utero, yes. before you're even here in the world, yes. we're going to start reading to you so that you hear those sounds and then how important that is to develop language. And then, as you said, to avoid that summer the lag, summer lull, that's yeah. that summer slump, <laughs> yep. um, so that we're not playing catch up when we get back to the classroom yes. later on in the in the summer. And then it's such a great time and a great way to engage. Yes. Um, and we have a ton of different programs that we put on throughout all four branches um, throughout the entirety of the summer. So we're going to st still have like our story times for um, all the parents to bring their little ones in. But we also are um, adding in a lot of different programs for the school age groups and for the teens and for the adults as well. Fantastic. So um, we have two really awesome authors coming in uh, to the main library to do their author events. So they're going to be talking about their books. And then we also have an author coming into the Richlands. Uh, library as well over the summer to talk about his book. Um, so we're not only having a, a, two adult authors, but we also have a, a juvenile author coming in to awesome. showcase her, her new book. So it's really oh, fun. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, if we want to be involved with summer reading, we want to get registered, what do we need to do? So you can either come into any four branches of the library and we can walk you through how to get registered. Um, and we have some QR codes. And then on our website, we also have it featured where you have a link that you can click on to sign up for summer reading. But if you're listening and just want to go on quickly, um, you just go to ocpl.readsquared.com and that'll take you onto the website to go ahead and get registered. If you have already registered in uh, previous years or you have your child registered with the Thousand Books Before Kindergarten program, you will already, already have your login uh, information. You just need to go ahead and sign up for a new program. And like I said, if there's any questions, any four, one, four branch employees will be able to uh, walk you through how to get signed up and how to start logging minutes on June 1st. On June 1st, so right now, for the uh, now, can we log on at any time? Perhaps we hadn't heard of it. Perhaps we yep. did, we got a little bit of a late start. Can we jump in midway? Yes, absolutely. You All can right. come in at any point in time. Um, for children, it's for every minute that they read, they get one point. And for adults, it's every book that they read, they get a hundred points. Now, points. I mean, points are one thing, right? But which is really <laughs> cool. 
But those points add up. Yes. And they result in? So for every um, 100 points, you get a new badge. So you start off with your first badge for signing up. So immediately you get a badge and it's a fun, uh, colorful badge that you get. And then for every 100 points that you get, you also get a new badge. And you can get up to 10 badges, which is 1,000 points. Fantastic. Yes. And that caps out at that point, but that does not mean that you have to stop reading. No, Please nobody's ever not said stop too reading. many points. Yes. Never no. too many points. And you can continue to read. Um, and then for uh, every third or for the third badge, you'll get a prize for children. Um, and then the fifth badge and then the eighth badge. Fantastic. So for those badges, you'll get um, special prizes that they can come pick up. But then also every week they get put into a drawing uh, to be able to win a weekly prize. So awesome. that's always a fun, engaging time for the kids. And not only that, we have fun prizes for the teens and adults too. So um, we have it made sure that it's encompassing everybody and a, a whole family event. Now, the, the really other fun part for me as a patron when I'm in the library is to watch when kids realize that they've won a prize yes. and they get to come in and get their prize. Oh, the pictures that we get, um, especially, you know, of the little, little ones. And even, I mean, honestly, the teens, I sometimes, their pictures of them getting their prizes is is great but the little ones are really excited and you can see the excitement and, and their want to continue to read at that point um, it's just an incentive to really make sure that um, we're doing our jobs as library personnel and as adults to um, focus on literacy and education for our young ones so and you know the the other thing is that this is a great way. I love to watch siblings. Yeah, too. it's like rivalries. You know, right? The competition, but also the bigs when they read to their littles. Yes. You know, and yeah. they, it's just that that bond yeah. that they form. Um, um, you all have been doing so many fun incentive kind of programs. I've loved watching your dragon program. Yes. This, all of these ideas that encouraging reading through innovative ways. And let's talk just a little bit about why it, we talked about that you have to read to do virtually anything. Yes. But the joy of reading as well. Talk about sharing that with early readers and beyond. And it's, it's hard sometimes for um, beginning readers to become excited about anything, really. Um, you really have to, and we as library workers, we really get down to the questions, the reference questions that we ask of, you know, if a child wants to learn about a dog, we have a ton of books about dogs. So let's go ahead and start asking those questions of what kind of dogs? Do you want fiction or nonfiction? And but once you find that book that that child puts in their hands and they love it, it's it just becomes this um, beautiful thing to watch because then they'll continue to come in asking for that book or asking for a similar book, and then they'll come in again and again and again, and next thing you know, they have a whole armful of books that they want to take home because that's their favorite series or that's their newfound you know favorite hobby or subject, and so. In the library, you know, we obviously have a ton of books, but we also have a lot of our digital resources. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when they when we don't have a book that they might not want or they might want, uh, we can find that from not only other libraries in our system here in Onslow, but we can find it in other libraries throughout North Carolina. But we can also find it digitally on our Hoopla and our Libby. And so we have a, a lot of different ways that we can get that book in that child's hand or that patron's hand because adults are the same way. Um, if, if they don't love a book, they're not going to read it. Right. And so we want to make sure that we're doing that with adults as well. So all ages. All uh, ages. For sure. <laughs> ready to read this summer. Yes. Ready to read this summer. And also, again, not necessarily that paper book, right. but digital resources. You know, I'm yeah. thinking about them on the beach this summer. You can have bring your bring your phone, bring your Kindle, bring your Nook. Um, you can also bring your earphones and listen because audiobooks count as well. Um, don't knock those out. That's still literacy. You're still reading. Um, you just might be listening to that read, but you're still reading when you're even uh, listening to audiobooks. So keep that in mind too. If you're listening to an audiobook and you're done with it, log that as adults. Log that for your hundred points and your next badge. Time well spent when you're out walking. Yes. Time in that summer car trip, 
Yes, that's there always you, one of my favorite. That's my go-to all the time is my audiobooks for long road trips. So there you go. Yeah. Now we want to remind folks best way to reach you. So give us your website, your main telephone number, and your socials because we want to know all the cool things that you all are doing. Yeah, absolutely. So um, our website is um, sorry. Our website is onslowcountync.gov forward slash library, and you can call us directly at the main branch at 910-455-7350. And you can also find us on all social media platforms um, at Onslow County Public Library. Fantastic. Well, we are looking forward to spending some time yeah. with you all this summer on our uh, summer reading adventures yes and all the cool things you've got coming on we're gonna uh, bring on Tori Parks from the library as well to talk about the other cool things that are running in conjunction with summer reading but Jen Randall thank you thank you for what you do for our kids always yes. year round <laughs> but especially this time of year absolutely and it's our pleasure and our joy obviously is something that we love to do so uh, we look forward to seeing everybody coming out to our library <laughs>
That is hysterical. I love it. We're always on a quest for a Sasquatch, a Yeti. Yes. You know, where is he? Where, where are they? I don't know. So they might be at your own local library. They might be. Now, um, some other things that you all have got planned. I have seen um, things being designed in all four branches, mm -hmm. themes. And then as the, the students and families and littles get engaged, mm -hmm. as we end the summer, Jen alluded to some prizes. I know you all also have a lot of friends in the community who help you make that possible. Yes, we do. So a lot of our support comes from our friends of the library, from all the different branches. So they have been a tremendous help. We also have a lot of different community sponsors. All right, so a big thank you to them in advance yes. because they've helped make this possible mm -hmm. as well as the hard work of all of your library team members. Yes. Anything else you want to share about where we can find adventure at our Onslow County Public Libraries? So you can find adventure in many different places. One place that I will say that you should check out is our newsletter because there are also um, a couple surprises in there. We're also going to be having some special reading dragon cards awesome. that can only be found at certain events. So that's something to look forward to. Um, but they can always check us out on Facebook, on our website, on our calendars and in our newsletters at any of the branches. Fantastic, so we're looking for dragons mm -hmm. and Sasquatches yes. and it is just a summer of adventure mm -hmm. at our Onslow County Public Libraries. Tori, as always, it's a lot of fun having you all here. We're looking forward to it. I have to ask, what are you reading right now? I am actually reading a series called Twisted. All right, <laughs> well, thank you. We look forward to learning more, to seeing your special guests that you all are having and listening because oftentimes we think libraries are supposed to be quiet. Yes, we are not quiet. <laughs> we are not quiet, we're full on. Mm -hmm. So Tory Parks, thank you. Thank you for bringing the adventure to Onslow County. Thank you. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us now is Norman Bryson, the director of Onslow County Emergency Services. Norm, thank you for being here. Thank you. Great to be here, Lisa, on such a pretty day. Right? I don't always get to see you when it's pretty weather, Norman. Usually the weather's pretty yucky when I get to see you. I think we need to do more interviews down here on the sound side myself. Uh, this, is, this is beautiful. Norman, of course, it is June. And every year at this time, you and I come together to have a conversation about inclement weather preparedness. Um, and I've already, we've seen some early ugly weather um, in May. Looking forward to a summer with our fingers crossed. But how are things looking? So, you know, we have already seen a lot of significant thunderstorms already this year. And if you start looking to the Midwest, there has been a lot of tornadic activity. For sure. If when you start talking about predictions, the uh, National Weather Service uh, has released their predictions not too long ago, which indicate there's going to be an active year in the Atlantic. Okay. Now, I often do my spiel with people when I talk about the predictions that come in for how many hurricanes we're supposed to have. And here's the simple thing. It doesn't matter. As long mm. as you can just have one, then that means you can be affected by the storm. So it doesn't matter if they say 15, 20, if it's a low year, a high active year. The key piece of it is we need to be prepared every year like we're going to be hit with one. Because we've had years where they predicted them to be low intensity years and we got affected by hurricanes. Right, we've, so last year we had a kind of what I would say was a pretty light summer for us and then had bizarrely almost it's like, you know, that kind of cyclonic weather in December that we had that was so bizarre. So I can't predict, right? That, that's right. So the key thing is to be prepared all the time. All that's the, time. the reason we talk about all hazard preparedness, making sure you have kits, supplies, and plans in place all year round, not just for one specific event. Even though hurricanes and coastal storms are our most, uh, our biggest, what do you say, bread and butter? What we see the most threat, of yeah, right. is our biggest threat. Uh, but you have to be prepared. You know, sometimes we'll even get that mythical snowstorm. Uh, right, I've heard of them. I maybe even have seen one or two, but you know, even this last, in the last week or two, we've seen like hail in places and sporadically. So let's talk a little bit about Onslow County specifically, right? We wanna be prepared for all, all possibilities. 
And Onslow County in and of itself, today we're at the beautiful Stump Sound in the southeast corner of the county. Gonna maybe even see very different weather in the course of a day in Richlands or Jacksonville or Swansboro. I mean, the county itself has a very unusual cultural, not cultural landscape, but natural landscape. A absolutely, and you know, I always tell people, make sure you have some kind of app or whatever it may be that allows you to know what the weather is going on in your community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that you can get out, products that you can get out there today that will, can, will focus in onto your community you live in, but some of them will even track where you're going to so you can get additional information. Because again, maybe you travel somewhere outside of Onslow County on a regular basis. You don't want to just know what the weather is in Onslow, you want to know what the weather is where you're going on as well. So there's lots of different products out there that you can be able to use that will tell you what the weather is, what it's going to be, give you watches and warnings and whatever may affect you in those areas. And we always recommend that is the first place for people to start. Make sure you're aware of what the potential may be coming that day or within the next few hours. And, and in Onslow County, we take that even a step further in that you can register to get weather alerts right here in your own county any way you want them, text, phone, email. That's through Alert Onslow, uh, which is a product that we have and we offer here in the county that you can sign up for. It will be able to allow you, let you know when you have thunderstorm warnings coming in through the area. Matter of fact, mine is even also set on the old, uh, former house I have. I even get warnings for up in that area there as well. Go. But it will also tell you lots of different things. It also is not just about weather. That mm -hmm. product will also let you know if there's events going on in our parks and recs as well. Very good. So you want to get registered, you want to know, want to be weather aware. And then when you talk about preparedness, all hazard preparedness, having that kit ready, there are a lot of great resources out there and websites you can go to to know exactly how to prepare that kit. Right, you can go to FEMA's website, you can go to ncready.org, any of these websites, and not only just how to build all hazard supply kit, it'll also talk to you about building plans and what type of plans that you need to have for different types of disasters and emergencies. It's not just a one-all. There's lots of things that you have to plan for. And like I said earlier, it's not just hurricanes. Right, right, it, absolutely. It, it is a, you know, it's a whole gambit of type of storms and disasters that you may see. And you can go on those websites, like I said, it tells you about building out plans. It talks about notification to family members and what you would need, but then it gets into your all hazard supply kit and what you want to have. And I, here's one thing I will say, this is an Onslow County thing. Right. A lot of those websites you'll go to and talk about being prepared for three to five days. Let's go back to Florence. Yes, sir. So we're recommending more being prepared for five to seven to anybody. Yes, That's the difference that we will say versus some of those national websites is be ready for five to seven days because you, you may have a long drawn out duration of an event and need to have those additional supplies on hand. So your food, your water, any type of supplies for that, have for just a few more days than what those websites recommend. Absolutely, and, and we did see that. We saw that firsthand and we saw people reaching out to us asking for that guidance. I have to turn our attention to the fact that we are at the beach today and this, again, this is gonna be that front line oftentimes. Again, can't always say always, right? They're That's all. Right always different personalities but because we're on the beach there are some different rules that we need to follow especially if we do have those hurricane watches and warnings come about for people who may be new to the area or may be here just for um, on vacation what are some guidance where, where do you recommend people begin if they're planning a trip to the beach and perhaps we do have one of those events occur well, of course, if you're planning to come to the area and you're wanting to look, of course, as you just mentioned earlier, your, your weather at North Topsail Beach can be much different than what your weather in Richlands is going For to be. Sure. So one, make sure you know what the forecasts and stuff are. The other big thing that is a threat that comes out of storms and hurricanes into these types of areas that will affect here versus inland is storm surge. Yes, sir. And that is something that can take a lot of effect, and it doesn't have to be a hurricane. It can be a nor'easter that causes a significant amount of storm surge when it comes into these areas as well. So that's one of those things you also have to take into account that can affect you much more on the coastal side, in and around the, in, the intercoastal waterways, even the rivers, as well as the beach itself because storm surge is one of those, like I said, you got to have you got to have a large body of water around you for it to affect you anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. So that's one of the things you have to take into account is what will the storm surges and stuff. Also knowing that on the beaches, you'll probably see a lot more severe weather on late in the afternoon than you would in inland anyway, because you'll get those coastal storms that will come in and be prepared for those. They're going to happen. You'll get a lot of lightning and stuff that will come in with them. So being prepared for those as well. And, and I also think about, you know, and we see, I mean, 
We're just beginning the season and the parking lot is full. Yes, it is. Full of folks who fortunately know how beautiful our beaches are and we're, we welcome them here. But we want them to be not just weather-wise, but ocean-wise. And your folks, you are the first responders. What is some guidance that you all give, especially for being as safe as you can possibly be when on the water, whether it be the sound or the ocean? Well, first thing, if you're on the ocean side, it's going to be be aware of riptides, what they are and how do you interact with them. If you're ever caught into a riptide, which is the water pulling you back out to the ocean, just don't struggle against it. Just go swim parallel to it, out to the side till you get through it. What a riptide is actually is you will have a, uh, a reef or barrier that is out there in the ocean that has broken through mm -hmm. and it causes a big drain for the water to be pulled back out. And what you want to do is swim parallel to that to get out of that. Otherwise, allow it to pull you out and once you stop pulling you out, then get back and try to bring yourself back in. Sure. We have a lot of people that uh, get themselves in trouble by trying to swim against the riptide, trying to fight against it, they tire themselves out. Oh, it's exhausting, yeah. Another key piece, and I cannot express this one enough, is don't swim in the inlet. The inlet to the New River where you have the meeting of North Topsail Beach and Onslow Beach, don't swim in that inlet. That's where we have most, some of our most medical calls that we have is in that inlet. People are there, they can't keep up with the shifting tides there. There's a huge pool and there's constant shifting of the sands out there. So don't swim in the inlet. There's signs there that say don't swim in the inlet, so please don't swim in the inlet. Don't, and it's where that river, and if you stand there and watch it, you can see that water moving and how rapidly it moves. Yes. Absolutely. So it's just, just not a place to swim. It's a great place to go fishing. It's a good place to go go play in the sand, but not to swim in. Right. Shell, but let's not let's not swim in there. That's right. Now the other thing which you all deal with quite frequently, um, it is again we're just beginning the season. It's already really warm, and you you had a team member years ago who would tell me if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. That's correct. Right. So let's talk about the heat. Make sure you bring lots of water with you. Have any type of beverages, make sure you have water something or something that has electrolytes in it to be able to help replenish your, uh, whatever you may be losing. But you're right. If you're already feeling thirsty, you're already to that point of being dehydrated. So that means you need to make sure you go and be able to hydrate yourself well, having that water and stuff on hand. Also, make sure you bring out a hat, sunscreen. You have to worry about, bi uh, about getting burned or anything along those lines. And that's another big thing people deal with out here is getting burns. And you also have to take the animal life into, yes. uh, you, you know, we do have jellyfish that come around here oh at certain gosh. burns times of the year. And, you know, they may, you may get bit. You got crabs, you got sharks. There's lots of different animals out here in and around the coastline that you have to be careful of. You're swimming in their environment. This is where they live. Right, it's beautiful, it sounds great, it's relaxing, but it is still a wild habitat. That's correct. It is still a wild habitat. So you have a saying, and I, I live by this saying. Um, I went through my gear this weekend, as a matter of fact, I thought perfect weekend to, to look at my kit. Always be prepared. What is your saying about the best, the worst, and hope for the best? You know, you, you plan for the worst, you hope for the best, but be prepared. That, that, that's the be end prepared. of it. Be, be prepared for all of it at in the end of the day. Uh, because if you're not, then you're going to be left trying to play catch up at the end of that. And you know, this is a wonderful and beautiful time of year. We want people to come to Onslow County. We want them to come here and enjoy it and have a great experience so they'll come back again. But there's still some things that you have to be prepared for so you make sure you make that trip back again with us. Enjoy your time here and enjoy it safely. Norman Bryson, you always give the best advice. I am so grateful for you and all of your team and what you do to keep us all safe. We are going to you prepare for the worst, hope for the best, but always be prepared. Thank you so much as always for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you as always for joining us for Onslow County today and thank you to Onslow County Park and Recreation for this beautiful setting who provided this access for us today. We also want to thank each of our guests. A special thank you to Captain Bruce Dixon from the Onslow County Sheriff's Office, Mary Downing from the Onslow County Museum, Jeremy Butler from Onslow County Vector Control. We also visited with Jennifer Randall and Tori Parks 
from the Onslow County Public Library and Norman Bryson. There is so much to do this summer in Onslow County. It is beautiful. There are outdoor concerts. There's the symphony. There are beautiful beaches, kayaking. It's always a day, a great day to explore your Onslow County today. We'll see you next time.